Vic Mensa, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, man. The last time you were on the show, we were in Chicago. We were in your home city. And then now, every day I see you on Instagram and you're in South Africa. And I feel like you stole my country from me. You're like, you like living... I can't travel. I can't go there. I can't come back. And then, like, you're just out there living my best life. I, f- I feel like you, you've just stolen you my changed, dream, man. What's going on? You changed your hair. So I'm over there telling them that I'm you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> They like the accent. My accent isn't all the way lining up, but you know, I was I was getting somewhere. I, you know, I, I was getting some privilege as you. Tell me a little bit about that, man. What 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 inspired you to go on this trip? Well, you know, I went to Ghana in January, and um, I've just been on a kind of Pan African mission. You know what I'm saying? And thinking a lot about connecting Black people here in America with black people on the continent of Africa. And so I went to Ghana because that's where my family is. And then I got the opportunity to go to South Africa. And um, I mean, it was amazing. You know, it was it was very interesting in that there was such extreme wealth and people living lavishly in a way that I don't think I've even seen this year other than there. And then there was on the flip side, a depth of abject poverty Right. In townships and people living in shacks, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 10 walls, 10 roof. Um, and these things are next door to each other, you know. Right. Um, so that, that that was striking. But then also just the, the culture, the rich, the richness of the culture was inspiring and beautiful. And, you know, the languages, it's like 11 languages and people speaking Kosa and Zulu. And I'm trying to find, I'm trying to figure you got out. You a good click, man. You, you got like a really that? good click. I, I was impressed with that. Normally people, normally people get stuck there. They'll be like, and and they were speaking. <laughs> oh, Sha, you just that was that was a nice click, Vic. You know, I was listening, man. That's the thing. I was I was trying to soak soak it up. I you you looked like you were having a good time, and and I feel like your music um your music shows that you've got a new EP out right now that's getting rave reviews. I tape. I'd love to know why you thought now was the right time and where you found the inspiration. Yeah, so this I tape is a part of a three part series. Um, the V tape, I tape, and then, you know, the eventual C tape. Um, and this was largely inspired by what transpired in 2020. Mm-hmm. You know? And so I'm in Chicago. I just moved back to Chicago when I started doing this series of EPs. And it's going to come together as one, you know, fully realized project. And I just moved back to Chicago. And then the world, is set on fire and there's riots on 47th street on the south side and buildings being burned and things that haven't happened since the 60s when martin luther king was assassinated and uh and so that just found its way into my music you know and so i was writing about that and writing about stories of friends of mine that um are incarcerated who you know have been a big part of my life and 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 you know that 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 form the basis of kind of the thematic structure it, it ended up being really about freedom you know it's 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 not just freedom but it's it's the lack of freedom you know when you're talking about the prison system and you're talking about people unfairly incarcerated and you're talking about how unfairly people get punished and kept in that carceral system some people would just sing about that in the music some people would rap about that in the music Vic Mensa takes that and I see you in the streets doing stuff. I see you going and bailing people out, giving them opportunities. I see you staging, you know, peaceful protests and walks and, and, and gathering people and having sleep-ins. What makes you so um, inspired, I think, to go beyond just the music, which is a powerful message, but go like, I'm going to take this into the streets as well? You know, I had an experience when I was making this project that informed a song on there called Musa. It was one of the most moving experiences of my life in that I was able to help a friend of mine who was convicted um, and sentenced to 25 years when he was 14 years old. When the pandemic started, you know, I threw a shot in the dark. He asked me if I could help him get his clemency in front of the governor. And I was able to to help him push that across the finish line. And he came home 12 years early. And um, and it just changed, it changed the way I look at life because it made me realize that, um, you know, first of all, my power, my own power is intrinsically as a person. And also um, 
that having having the faith and belief to see what seems impossible, you know, right. come to fruition is is what's necessary. And so I find myself doing things in the real world because these are the relationships that are important to me. These are the people I spend time around. You know, I might be in South Africa pretending to be Trevor Noah, you know, for like <laughs> three weeks, you know. But most of the time I'm in Chicago and I'm I'm surrounded by people that are working, you know, nine to five jobs or trapping or right, you know, right, right. In the streets. And it's like those are the people whose stories I speak and those are the people that I'm speaking for and whose lives are closest to me. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. What do you what do you think it is about Chicago that 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 gives us so many of like some of the most conscious rappers. Like, there seems to be an essence to Chicago rap that goes beyond just making the music. What do you think it is about Chicago that inspires that? Chicago's got a history of just revolutionaries, you know? Uh, I think that Kugler and that entire team, they they showcase that well in that many people may not be familiar with the story of Chairman Fred Hampton mm-hmm. and, you know, that that strong history of just revolutionary action in Chicago. And I think on top of that, Chicago is also not a place full of industry. So differing from New York or LA, you don't have the film industry, you don't have the music industry largely. It's it's like a blue collar city. And, right. and also Chicago is is an acute representation of hoods around America because of what happened with the public housing. Chicago was the was the biggest public housing experiment in America. Mm. You know, stacking poor people on top of each other like sardines in a can and created an extremely segregated city that when they tore down those projects has largely contributed to the streets being in turmoil. But then it's also got the history, you know, of revolutionary action. So I think that we always had a perspective to to be able to analyze what's happening. And the way that we express it, like a journalist, is you know through our body. Right, right, right. Yeah, man, you 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 you've always inspired me, Vic. And one of my favorite um, pieces from you wasn't in fact in music; it was an op-ed that you wrote, um, and it was it was essentially, you know, addressed to President Joe Biden, where you said, you know, one of the biggest debts, and I paraphrase you, one of the biggest debts he has right now is to make right what happened to black communities because of COVID. Before I let you go, talk me through a little bit about that and, and why you feel it's important, not just for you to speak out, but for the government to actually look at people who were impacted in the worst ways because of COVID, because it amplified what already existed in America. That's the thing about about a situation like COVID is that the structure is set for Black people to be damaged more by mm-hmm. any storm that hits America we're the ones that are most likely to be left in the cold. And, you know, Joe Biden, he he owes us on a lot of levels, though, because we put him in power, you know? It was in Atlanta and in, in Georgia and the South, across the nation, Black people right. put Joe Biden in power. And um, so he he owes us, he owes us on many levels. Um, and I want him to remember that, don't forget that, because we ain't forgot it. And, you know, um, no, you really inspired me too, Trevor, because... Uh, the idea of being African-American, I love, I just I always go back to that special of yours, the African-American, because although, uh, you know, we come from different sides of the globe, I have that same experience, you know, of being like, right, right. In, in the most literal sense of the word, an African-American, you right. know? And I, that's why I, I put so much, um, I put so much emphasis on our our collaboration, because it's like, Black people in South Africa, in Soweto, in Ghana, in Chicago, in Atlanta, we all are facing a common enemy, you know, and our unity expands our possibility. Yeah, man. I appreciate you in that, man. It's, 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 it's like Daniel said last night at the Oscars, which I really loved. He said, in, you know, instead of allowing them to divide and conquer, you figure out how to unite and ascend. And then mm. that hit me, you know. So I appreciate you, my dude. Thank you for taking the time. Congrats on an amazing EP. Me, I'm, I'm excited to enjoy the eye tape and then we wait for the C tape until I see you next time, my friend. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. All right. Peace. All right, Vic.